Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today, uh, I want to go through what it's like owning and using a Samsung Galaxy J3 Achieve in 2024. So, first and foremost, for pricing, you can get one in pretty good condition on eBay from like $20 to $30. Uh, this one I got for $25. The seller actually did a really good job either refurbishing or taking care of this or just preserved it. Um, so far, I haven't had any massive issues with it. The only issue is obviously that, you know, it can be underpowered and slow sometimes. And 16 gigs of storage of Android 9 is uh, not the best. Uh, I have noticed that not putting this on the latest security update version, like my old J3 over there that's on the charger in the back, uh, that one is running the latest security software, so it only has like six and a half, seven gigs of storage free. This had like 9.2, but currently it has, bear with me, 7.9 but it fluctuates between 7.9 and 7. Point, or no 8.2 because it does auto memory cleaning and stuff but um i'm being thrown off track <laughs> this video is going to go off the rails real quick isn't it and i don't feel like editing it so oh well but anyway this phone overall for a cheap phone, if you just want a phone to use and you really don't need to play any games on it, like any demanding games, it's not bad. The problem is the storage. That's going to be an issue, especially if you're a TikTok user because TikTok eats a lot of storage over time um, because it collects a bunch of data and whatnot. And if you're someone who takes a lot of photos, you're going to want an SD card slot. The good thing about this phone is that it can support a 256 gigabyte SD card at best, which is exactly what I have in my other one. And while that's fine and all, putting apps on there probably isn't the best idea because uh, SD cards are notoriously slower than the phone's onboard storage. But if you don't really care for a bunch of apps, it's a good phone for just calling, texting, maybe video calling. It does video calling pretty well, actually. Um, for what I know, this is on boost. I'm not sure if there's unlocked variants and if there are, they're either, they were either made outright or just, I don't know about that one. Moving on gaming, something I touched on a, just like a few minutes ago. Um, I've really only tested like three games. Uh, I played Roblox before on this not too long ago. It's okay it's not anything fantastic but it's usable ish most games run at around 30 fps some really struggle and don't bother playing big games like meep city adopt me uh pet simulator x i guess i don't know those are the only big games i have on my mind oh blocks roots too blocks roots especially um as for low-end games or older games it works good for that uh especially if you're someone who loves retro games it should work great emulation i have not tested but as far as i'm concerned uh snes nes should work fine with it not exactly sure about N64 or really anything newer. Game Boys and stuff should work. So emulation-wise, it's okay. I haven't tested it, though, so you'll have to find out yourself if you do have one of these. Battery life, though. Because this one is in really good condition, it actually holds a pretty good charge. That is until you start playing games that are higher-end. Like I said, like Minecraft, Roblox um call of duty mobile or something um but the battery life for general use should be good enough for most people if they're just looking for like a mm, cheap main phone or whatever and plus the nice feature about this phone is that you can just take the back off and upgrade the battery if you really want to which is very nice I'm not sure how far battery upgrades can really go because considering that it's like physical, there's a physical size limit here. 
Um, maybe like optimization, new tech and whatnot. It does have a nano SIM. It does not support 5G. Um, but if you have a boost SIM or you know how to like hijack these things and unlock them or whatever, then good for you. Um, uh, as for durability, I, it's a mixed, it's a mixed bag. My old one, when it cracked, uh, it fell on the side. It had one crack on it. It fell on the side quite a few times, which is really good, um, for a cheap phone that is. For a flagship, that's not great. If only a few side drops will cack it. Uh, but once it got that one crack, it eventually got a second one just falling off like three feet from my bed. And then I got unlucky at one point and dropped it and it landed right on the screen. And, uh, would you believe it shattered? It still works. My old one, that is. But durability should be okay. Um, I haven't really had too many issues with the back flying off. Um, the only reason my old one does that is because Eclipse went bad because uh, I used to use an incompatible battery. Camera quality is hit or miss. I wouldn't recommend using it in low light. Um, but in medium to high light conditions where the sensor can actually do its sensory magic, I don't know. I'm not that big into cameras. Pictures aren't too bad. As for video, it should be good enough. But again, low light is just mixed bag there. Um, there are ways to get better frame rate in low light situations, whether it be using a third party camera app to force the exposure down, uh, like one, uh, one I use called HD camera or just called camera, but they changed everything. And uh, I still have an old version though. Anyway, but, um, if you're the type of person to screen record, like use this for like screen recording and gameplay, um, be warned, there is, n this is not Android 10, so you're not going to get internal audios, but if you use Mobby Zen, you can probably get their stereo recorder, unless if you're okay with external audio and not having good audio quality, it should be okay. Flashlight, well, it doesn't really show up very well on video, does it? I accidentally activated the Google Assistant, and I'm being called. Like I said, this video is going off the rails. Awesome. <laughs> uh, flashlight, self-explanatory. It's not too bad. It should be bright enough. I'm not the best reviewer, but I, it feels like I'm one of the only few people who actually care enough to buy something like this because it's a good phone for cheap, and I like making the best out of cheap phones. For multitasking, it should be fine because... It has two gigs of RAM, which is actually pretty good. That is, uh, until you start multitasking higher-end apps, like whether it be a game and a different app on the bottom. Multitasking with games just isn't a good idea. But YouTube Picture-in-Picture -picture works okay. It does stutter and lag every once in a while. But really, other than that, I have not much else to say about this thing other than the fact it has a headphone jack. Mmm, we need this back. Anyway, for charging, it charges at 7, seven watts, like 1.55 amps, which for the battery being a 2600 milliamp hour, you'll probably be charging this to full in about an hour and 40, 45 minutes or so, which for the decent to good battery life on this should be fine. Um... But again, it's the battery is removable. So if you have like a phone battery charger, you can just take the battery out, put another one, in, boom, you're instantly charged. My favorite thing about this thing. Um, so overall, at the end of this, for the price, it's actually a really good phone. It's a lot better, and I will say that it's a lot better than some of the cheap Samsung flagship phones. A series phones, not flagship. Oh, again video going off the rails i'm too lazy to edit <laughs> anyway uh this is definitely better than the galaxy ao3s uh my dad has one a couple of my friends has one the lower class a series phones cost more than this yet are slower and that's because samsung updated the android version on those way too far past comfortability 
That doesn't mean I'm going to say that this version is perfect either, because when this was on Android 8, it was a little bit faster, not by a whole bunch, but it was definitely noticeable. But on Android 9, you're better off with Android 9 for the cleaner UI, the dark mode, and especially, um, I don't know, app support. <laughs> um, but overall, if you're okay with limited storage or have an SD card, take a lot of pictures and put them on the SD card and whatnot, um, or you're just looking for a protege phone or secondary, this is a great phone for cheap. Um, like I said, you can find them for like $25, $20, $30 on eBay in fair to good condition. So, uh, yeah, that's basically it.